Hi everybody, it's Honest John again. Um, now I was going to end my mental illness series on uh, kleptomania, but I got, it got pointed out to me that I left out phobias and it really would not be complete uh, uh, without phobias. So, um, and, and if somebody else has uh, something else that they want me to deal with, please uh, 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 let me know and uh, uh, I'll I'll do some research and work on that. So, on with the phobias. Now, a phobia is a persistent fear of an object or situation disproportionate to the actual danger involved. Sometimes there's no danger at all. So, a person, for example, who has a phobia about snakes will experience the same panic in the presence of, say, a harmless garden snake as they would in the presence of a cobra. Some people have phobias about specific objects like snakes, spiders, uh, animals, water heights, uh, closed spaces, open spaces, on and on. These specific phobias are often managed by the individual simply by avoiding the situation or object. It's fairly easy to stay away from uh, snakes by just not hiking in the desert or uh, if you're afraid of flying, uh, don't get on the plane, you know, take a train or, or go by car or boat. So, unless you absolutely need to overcome your phobia in order to function, make a living, or uh, interact with others, then uh, that's okay. It's okay to do that. More generalized phobias especially those related to social situations, can be harder to avoid. Uh, fear of crowds, strangers, just interacting. Uh, a lot of people are afraid of public speaking. Uh, and they, these are pretty common phobias. Uh, they're more difficult to avoid, so the need for therapy may, uh, 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 may arise. Agoraphobia is probably the best known phobia and uh, it is uh, basically uh, a lot of people consider it to be fear of everything and that's uh, pretty close to right. Agoraphobics, they don't want to leave their home. Uh, now unless you're totally filthy rich, uh, you have to go outside to, to function. And also, if you can't leave your home, uh, you're not likely to have social relationships. So agoraphobia must be overcome in order to lead a, a successful and fulfilling life. Uh, phobias do vary in intensity. Um, some people, when confronted with the uh, with their feared object, just feel uh, anxiety. Some people go to full-fledged par uh, panic attacks. Uh, so there are people who have phobias, but the uh, the level of fear is low level, and they manage them. They somehow manage them. Uh, still, I wouldn't want to live with that much anxiety. I I might seek out therapy if I had that kind of situation. Um, now, some people develop phobias because of a traumatic uh, uh, incident. For example, a person who is uh, in an automobile accident may develop a fear of cars, or a person who has been bitten by a dog might develop a fear of dogs. Um, children can become phobic if they see adults respond with fear to objects or situations. They look up to those adults and, and so it really has a big impression on them and so if they see their mother going crazy because there's a spider in the house, they might really develop that fear of spiders, something like that. Now some clinicians theories that theorize that there are some phobias that are displacements. In other words, uh, the feared object is not really the feared object, uh, uh, although it consciously is. Subconsciously, it's a displacement of 
fear of something that is uh, unsafe to be afraid of. Let's say you're deathly afraid of your father. Uh, phobia allows you to be comfortable around your father while displacing that fear onto an object like a snake that uh, you can avoid. People who have phobias usually realize that their fear is exaggerated and irrational and that really helps with treatment. Uh, if they're motivated, treatment can work very well. There are several different ways of treating phobias. There's a systematic desensitization, uh, which uh, involves uh, gradually introducing the person to the object of their fear. So first you might do guided imagery, just having the person think about the object or situation that scares them. Now, with the development of virtual reality, you can uh, then start to expose that person to that object in virtual reality so the person feels safe, uh, but at the same time is getting a degree of exposure to the object. And that's a nice intermediate step before you actually begin to expose the person to uh, those objects in, uh, in reality, objects or situations. Uh, there's also cognitive behavioral therapy. Now this is a little bit complicated, and, uh, but basically it is, uh, first of all, you uh, help the person develop an awareness of their thought process as they're exposed to their feared object. And then uh, through a fairly lengthy process, you have the patient, you help the patient to challenge their own thought process when it comes to the feared object. Uh, I, I, that's about the best I can do for an explanation. Uh, but uh, regardless of the fact that I'm not explaining it too well, it uh, is uh, considered to be a very effective therapy. Hypnotherapy is sometimes used. Uh, there are also some therapies that have been proposed, but most people in the field think that they're uh, basically quackery, so I'm not going to get into those. Um, now, uh, antidepressant and anti-anxiety meds are used in the treatment of phobias and are very helpful. The most important thing for staff in a clinical situation to understand is that <laughs> you're not the therapist. You should be supportive, be a good listener, but don't try to take the therapist's role. Let the therapist do his thing and don't interfere with that. Uh, and phobias are very treatable. Uh, they can be overcome with support and good therapy. Uh, it's a hard road, but not impossible. Thanks for listening.